An economy drive for the Crouches and Grandmas feeling the cold. The Tuesday night comedy continues here on BBC One at 10.35. A magnificent setting, two great teams, what drama here. David and Rory this week is an Australian spin bowling legend, Shane Warne, who is to be portrayed in a film by Russell Crowe. The hard-drinking, hell-raising wild man is delighted that Russell Crowe will be playing him. <laughs> With Phil and Jonathan this week is a former Great Britain Rugby League star and Welsh Rugby Union captain who scored Wales' last points at the old Cardiff Arms Park in 1997. And as a mark of respect, the Welsh team have failed to score any points anywhere. <laughs> Jonathan Davies. We start the show with a handbags question. David, Rory and Shane have a look at this. Here's the world's most famous man strutting his stuff on the pitch. And here's 60-something Scouse troubadour Paul McCartney. But what has Beck's done to upset the Liverpool legend? David's team? You've worked with Beck, haven't you? Of course. I have. You like him? He's a good guy. He really is a good guy. Is he a good bloke? <laughs> <laughs> is it something to do with Liverpool was voted the, inexplicably, voted the European city of culture, wasn't it? Mm, it was a close run thing between Liverpool, Oxford and Newcastle, I think, but the Scouts has just nicked it. <laughs> <laughs> probably just normally, normal English whinging, probably, maybe. Is that what they got in common? Could have been. <laughs> Just whinging about losing or something like that? It could have been about that, Shane, that's right. Okay. David Beckham's currently playing professional sport, Shane, unlike I you. I like though. David Beckham. <laughs> you know what? You're in this country because I signed for you. Now behave yourself. <laughs> Who was it? You signed for it. I signed for it. How did you come by DHL? <laughs> Here for you, Mr. Ross just signed there. <laughs> oh, look at him. He looks like Flash well, Gordon in a wind tunnel. Look. <laughs> First of all, congratulate um, David on, on Sunday's performance. Good? Not bad, yeah. <laughs> a clean sheet. Mm -hmm. How did the Tottenham fans treat you like? Usual. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? I was uh, delighted you did so well because I've actually started following uh, David's career with undue interest because um, you are actually <laughs> the goalie in my wife's fantasy football team. <laughs> Her and a friend Emily have joined a fantasy football league and of course they turned to the man of the house for advice as to who to have on the team and out of, <laughs> out of loyalty I went for old safe hands over there. <laughs> about, hang on, I'm about the third youngest here by the way. Oh, I'm the third youngest? Yeah. <laughs> so sad that you've counted everyone's age. Don't worry. Third youngest. <laughs> You're actually doing quite well. You must be delighted to know that you're on my wife's fantasy list. I wouldn't mind being your wife's fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to be. <laughs> Come on then. McCartney's a very, very um, vehement uh, vegetarian. He takes vegetarianism very seriously. He does, yeah. And I know that Beckham was thinking about becoming a vegan because he liked the pointy ears, you know. <laughs> Is it something to do with something that um, Beckham endorses then, which would have an animal product in it, for example? Mm -hmm. Mm. Like, they, they, you take over, Captain? <laughs> yeah, Shane. I'm <laughs> 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 with Rory, yeah. I'm with Rory, I agree with him, something along those lines. Um, How did that boot, <laughs> depending on the boot, is what he advertises. And I'm wondering whether that's made of leather. Yeah, I'll give you three points, I'll give you three points. Oh. You're very good at In fact, it's all down to kangaroos. Animal welfare organisation Viva, who are publicly supported by Paul McCartney, have called on David Beckham to throw out his predator boots because they're made of kangaroo skin. 
As staunch vegetarian Sir Paul says, there is an urgent need to protect kangaroos from a barbaric industry which slaughters them for meat and leather. It makes you wonder if David Beckham was wearing his kangaroo boots when England lost to Brazil last year. <laughs> Beckham has apologised to vegetarians. He said he didn't want to upset them because one day England might have to play in vegetarian. <laughs> Still on the two Jonathans, it's a handbag question for you as well, and it's Rugby League. Here's some tries and big hits from the recent Super League clash between Warrington Wolves and Widnes Vikings. Why have the two teams fallen out, Bill's team? Before we start, let's welcome Jonathan yeah. probably to the show, ladies and gentlemen, one of the finest rugby players. A legend! Players, uh, a legend! A legend! That's right. As a matter of fact, uh, yes, yes. I would like to take a moment to try and welcome in his native tongue the Welsh that I've been studying. <laughs> yeah. I would like to welcome you to the show. <laughs> Hold on! No, no, no. You're I slipping you. towards it, ain't all hot, my baby. Whitney's in Warrington, what's they got? We, 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 they we, close, they were seven <laughs> miles apart. Is it because Warrington are trying to rewrite the walls of rugby? Jonathan doesn't play rugby anymore, do you? No. Do you play any sport now? Golf. No, any sport? <laughs> <laughs> you want to play tennis, that's a man's game. I, it oh, is, yeah. yeah. I don't think you've got what it takes to play tennis, Not if you don't any, mind me saying, any, Davis. Any time, any time, John. How come there are no good Welsh tennis players? There's no good English ones to start. <laughs> So we're talking about Warrington versus Widnes, some yeah. dispute. I don't know mate, what do you reckon rugby? I mean this is your, this is your game mate. I think it's got to be something about Widnes, because Widnes is a very industrial town and um, a lot of people think it's rather smelly there and uh, it must be something to do in the programme when they play each other. Some, something must have, one of the Warringtonians must have said something or printed something in the programme. That's and close enough, so. I'll give you three points. Yeah. Not far. Well, that's not far. <laughs> The problem all started with a poster produced by Warrington for the game between the two clubs. Widnes, a former hotbed of the petrochemical industry, was depicted as a toxic wasteland with smoking <laughs> chimneys, <laughs> nuclear waste and a three-eyed fish. <laughs> Warrington was the birthplace of Chris Evans and he's still very much a Warrington boy. He's out of a job and he married a teenager. <laughs> David's team have three points and Phil's team have three points. Yeah. We crack on with the photo fit round. David's team, here's yours. It's the cat. <laughs> well, there's only one hairstyle like that, isn't there? Is it you, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Might be my, that might be me when I get to Jonathan's age. We talk about <laughs> <laughs> that would have to be Nancy. <laughs> huh? Have to be. So that's all Rika in the middle then? <laughs> yeah, the, the top's definitely got to be Sven. And the bottom oh. bit, that, that is under that sort of piratical goatee beard can only be yeah. one sports person. Virginia Wade. <laughs> <laughs> now I think we know that. No, that's definitely Robert Perez. Alright. Yeah. Definitely. Now, I think the middle is a man who had his cheeks perforated during a Tom and Jerry cartoon <laughs> and ill-advisedly drank a glass of milk. <laughs> Good. If, if someone had had his face painted like a tiger, is that right? Mm -hmm. He's a tiger. Tiger Tim Henman. They've got three out of three. Oh, well done. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You see who they are. That's the flyaway hair of Sven Euren Eriksson, the tabloid enhanced features of Tiger Tim Henman, and the D'Artagnan facial hair of Arsenal's Robert Perez. Tim Henman is worried that Henmania only adds to the pressure on him, but David Beckham's reassured him, saying Henmania is a lovely place and you'll probably beat them. <laughs> Robert Pires has been out of the Arsenal side recently, but with their suspension crisis looming, he'll soon be back in the team. In fact, things have got so bad at Highbury that Arsene Wenger was overheard on the phone saying, just turn up, Rory, we can lend you a pair. <laughs> Phil's team, here are your three. Oh my God. <laughs> Not Celine Dion, is it? Yes. 
got a certain Celine look about it, hasn't it? Must be a wedding photo. <laughs> The railings on that. <laughs> it's got to be Beckham there, can not it? It's got to be top half Beckham. The hair of a princess, the eyes of a madman, the mouth of a Thai ladyboy. <laughs> I can imagine, though, no, oh, you know, by rugby good. player standards, she's not a bad looking girl, is she? No. <laughs> you all tall and stuff, you know. <laughs> all right, I think you're right, Captain. I think that's Beckham's hair. Yeah, so Campbell's eyes. Is it? Ronaldinho, isn't it? Yeah. And the, he's had his teeth done. God, they must have been shocking before he had them done. Eh? <laughs> the burnt fence. Teeth like a burnt fence. <laughs> now I know what happened my holiday home. <laughs> I'm going to give you two out of three. You Why? What's wrong with you? We got all three. Man. You're struggling on the hair. Emmanuel Petit. Oh. No, not Emmanuel Petit. No, I'm going to hand it across. They won't get it either, I bet you. Do you know the hair? Pete Sampras' bikini line. <laughs> <laughs> No, you've got two out of three. Let's split it up and discover who it is. We, it's the would-be Beckham locks of cricketer Dominic Cook. Oh, oh, no. No. Yeah, the gimlet eyes of Sol Campbell and the never-ending oh. chin of come-and-get-me Brazilian star Ronaldinho. <laughs> Dominic Cook once appeared on Ready Steady Cook with Anne Robinson. He did his speciality, shepherd's pie, and she did her speciality, mutton dressed as lamb. <laughs> Despite his looks, buck tooth striker Ronaldinho likes a night out, but he always stays in at Halloween in case children try to hollow him out and put a candle in. <laughs> at the end of that round, Phil's team have five points and Dave's team have six. Oh, <laughs> round three is the treble, where the teams have to link three sports personalities with three objects. David's team, your subject for the trouble is sporting superstitions. Here are your three. Ditchwater dull tomb goal bagger Alan Shearer. Pom bashing Aussie timber wielder Steve Waugh. And no nonsense, I'm up for a fight, Arsenal defender Laurent. So, David's team, all three have their superstitions, right. but which one always has a coin in his sock? Who insists on eating beans before every game? And which one never plays without having a red hanky about his person? Who eats beans as a professional sportsman? What's wrong with beans? Just don't get too close, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you have, when you were touring something, you had beans imported, didn't you, from Australia, is that right? To India. To India. Mm. It's better than Indian food, I'll tell you, that is rubbish. But, <laughs> you're, talking, you're, you're talking about our national our cuisine. National. <laughs> <laughs> a few of the players uh, wanted, they were sick of the uh, bit of food from India, and they just wanted a few beans or tin spaghetti or something on toast just before they go to cricket. And uh, SPC and Heinz decided to take it upon themselves to send three tonnes of each one. <laughs> And the players took a couple of cans each and uh, donated the rest back to India. And uh, I think they're still eating it. <laughs> I don't like to stereotype, but that's typical Aussies, isn't it? Eh? I'm really happy with prison food. It's <laughs> 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 uh, you who ordered them. Do you have any, do you have any superstitions, Shane? <laughs> Before a match, any superstitions that you um, told you go through anything? Well, probably just as I'm walking out and I'm about to get to the grass to walk out in the field of play, just... Drop my fag. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. He walks on the pitch and says, "Oh, grass." <laughs> or he walks out and goes, "Oh, look, someone's dropped a fag down there." I've seen it all. What about you, Dan? Do you have any superstitions? My biggest one is I, I don't like to take any other gloves out apart from the ones I'm wearing. Why not? Because that's just a superstition. I just don't like anything in my net. Well, that's changed a lot, hasn't it? <laughs> Shearer she is boring enough to, to probably eat beans, do you think? Do you know him? Yeah, I, I, I do know that Shearer does have... He has beans before a pretty much, doing not saying I'm boring too, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> not compared to Alan Shearer. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren might keep um, money down his side. Could be him. I'll tell you what, though, when, when Lauren squared up to Van Nisseroy, there was only one winner there. Because that boy can look after himself. He's He's done a bit of boxing in his time. Has he really? He really has. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. We saw him the other day. <laughs> 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 what a big fight that was. <laughs> 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 Scary. 
This is scary stuff. <laughs> do rugby this players? Good. I like this. Do you think? What do you think of football players? What do you think of them as as, as men? They're all right, but like you want someone like you and runs up and goes, he'll be like just stick your head on him, wouldn't he? Really, nothing. <laughs> I tell you what I don't like about that football stuff is when they, sorry I'm not trying to, but with that football thing, so as soon as someone just touches them on the foot of that, they dive as far as they can and overdo it. They yeah. should just send them off straight away. Yeah. Then they won't stop doing it, they jump around and act like bloody sissies when they jump over it. <laughs> so the consensus of opinion is then professional football is bunch of fucks, is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see you outside. <laughs> <laughs> no you won't. <laughs> So what about this red head game? The red towel is definitely Steve Wall right. because I think it was Adelaide Oval were playing and they don't have any white towels when you want to have a shower. So they only have red towels and Stephen was getting runs in Adelaide. That's not the runs from that <laughs> silly Indian food, but that was actually runs with the cricket bat. <laughs> and he was getting hot under his head, so he actually asked for the 12th man to bring out a towel, cut up a towel so he could put it in his pockets when he got hot. Yeah. And they only have red towels, so the red towel is definitely Steve Wall. Yeah. No, Lauren definitely puts a coin, it's a coin or some sort of medallion down, down his shin pad. Right, you've got three out of three then, well done, yes. <laughs> In fact, Alan Shearer never plays unless he's chock full of beans. Steve Waugh won't head for the crease without his favourite red hanky tucked into his pocket, an idea he got from a succession of England captains who used to carry a white one. <laughs> and Cameroon international Laurent spends every minute of the day with a Spanish coin tucked into his sock, unlike the rest of the Arsenal defence who keep a billiard ball in theirs. <laughs> when Shearer joined Newcastle, the club shop actually ran out of H's and E's for his replica shirts. Man United had a similar problem with their Alex Ferguson replica tracksuits when they ran out of W's and K's. <laughs> Steve Waugh devotes a lot of time to charity and has raised thousands of pounds for lepers. When David Beckham heard, he said, I don't blame him. Lepers are lovely creatures. <laughs> they have long whiskers and they're spotty fur. <laughs> Phil's team, your subject is sporting injuries. Take a look at this trio. Tough tackling one-time Wigan Aussie Jamie Ainscoe. Wimbledon's favourite big serving Croat, Goran Ivanisevic. And Villas, don't call me Darius, it's Darius actually Vassell. But Phil's team, which of them was injured by a seashell, which by a misplaced tooth, and who was laid low by an electric drill? We need, we need these points. We you do, do need you these You were just points. saying that we're behind, and you know what I think it is? It's not just you got the flu, I think it represents the difference between the sporting ethics of your Australian and your English. Yeah. <laughs> the Australian sport to win is everything. First is first, second is nothing. Am I right, Shane? Yes. Victory is not just desirable, it is essential. Yes. Shane, you would rather walk across hot coals, eating burning, broken glass, having your knackers waxed by a blind sumo wrestler that can see the single run, never mind a game, to the scum that dare stand before you on the field of sport. Yes. You must win. Yes. Win or lose, happy days. Happy days. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. It's a problem. I would have thought in rugby that's a problem in your teeth. Because you wear, yeah. do you wear like boxers, you wear gum shield, don't you? Yeah. It's a problem in football as well. I know gold is as well, because it's quite physical. Because David always takes his teeth out and puts them in a little mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Every match. I know, a few birds who do that. <laughs> Have you got your own teeth, eh, mate? Yes. Oh, that's a good effort for a rugby player. <laughs> that's actually nice. <laughs> That's well played. And they're a nice set of gnashes as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you a bit of a puff when you played? Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst injury you've ever had, Jonathan? You must have had some injuries. Well, that's your oh. finger. Oh, oh, what's up there? You've got, you got dodgy fingers as well, haven't you? a couple as well that only yeah. goes about there. You guys have got to take it easy when you're playing piano. <laughs> Rugby's a real tough game. You don't get those sort of injuries in football. The longest you were off, I believe, for a month with split ends, but that's about it. <laughs> Jonathan knows the one about the teeth, which is yeah. just horrific. Yeah. Jamie Insko, yeah. someone bit him while he was playing, and he came off afterwards, and his arm was sore, and there was a tooth in his arm, someone had bit him, wasn't yeah. it? But they didn't actually find out there was a tooth in his arm for a week. Yeah. They thought it was just bad bruising. <laughs> That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. Right? That's hard. And that, the uh, bloke who bit him missed out on six months <laughs> as well, didn't <laughs> <laughs>
seashell. Someone's obviously trodden on a seashell somewhere. He's good. Well, okay. The truth he's we know is the rugger bugger. Yeah. Right. Right. The shell we reckon Gotta is Goran. Goran with the shell. That means um, Darius or Ducius or whatever you say his name. Yeah. How do you say his name? Darius. Darius. All right. The drill. Him is the drill because he, he he his dentist wasn't open and he did a filling at home. Well, that <laughs> that's not the reason, but it's not far off. But you've got three out. Three. Well done. <laughs> It was Jamie Ainsco who was badly injured by a tooth when an x-ray revealed that a tackle had left one embedded in his arm for over a week. Rugby league, now that's a man's game. If Ruud van Nistelrooy had been tackled like that, he'd have jumped right back to Holland. <laughs> Goran Ivanisevic missed several tournaments after carelessly treading on a seashell and infecting his heel. Apparently he nearly stepped on cockles and mussels, or the Williams sisters as they're known. <laughs> Darius Vassell made the elementary mistake of trying to burst a blister under his toenail, and this is absolutely true, with a power drill. <laughs> he isn't completely stupid though, he did wear a hard hat and safety goggles. <laughs> Darius Vassell's injured toe wasn't his last DIY injury, he took advantage of his time off to knock one of his lungs through into the other to create more breathing space. <laughs> That's a marvellous job. Thank you. End of that round, Phil's team have eight points and David's team have nine. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to don the black blindfolds as we play Field of Sportsman. Phil and Jonathan, to your positions, please. You now, you Phil, you're, you're feeling okay because you he's really, ladies and gentlemen, he's so ill. He would not, I mean, most of us would not have bothered coming in today. We're so ill. No, no. It's only because he's got nowhere else to fit. <laughs> right, blindfolds on. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Your time starts now. Hang on. Well, I've got an aura. This feels familiar. Steady. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite, it's quite a big fellow over here. <laughs> Is that a goalpost? Oh, hey, man, sit here hiring. You know you want to get down there. <laughs> oh, you're a lady. <laughs> You know, when they jab you with their stick, it means they want you. I know who this one is. Walking stick, monocle, Chris Eubank. It's a lady, isn't it? It's a lady with a big pole. It's a, it's a, a fine figure of a lady with oh, a big old stick here. What is this? What well, are they coxless? Yes, yes. The, the British cox ladies. Two. The coxes pippins. What have they won recently? Come on. The world. The world. World champion. Yes, that's it. World champion coxless Sexual harassment. If you want his name, it's Tuffnell. His address is no fixed abode. <laughs> right, David and Rory. Now uh, you're going to need to wear these. Uh -oh. Do you know what they are? <laughs> <laughs> Blindfolds and gloves on, please. <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Whoa. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounding odd. Bloody hell. Do, do Flyno have a Formula One team? <laughs> this is. Oh, what's that? I don't know, David. Oh, I've got that. a blindfold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've told him to stop spoiling Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I don't know. It's, someone put Michael Schumacher in hot wash. <laughs> <laughs> is there a famous go-kart, young go-kart? Go yeah. is, is it the, the bloke who's done something brilliant with go-karts and very young? <laughs> yes, 
I'm going to give you the points for that. He's our British go karting champion, Alexander Sim. That's very good. That's very good. And so, the scores at the end of that round are Phil's team with 11 and David's team with 12. Yay. We finish with the name game. It's a normal one this week. Uh, David's team are in the lead, so that Rory's going to be doing the clues. Can you pass those along to Rory, please? As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds, starting now. Um, part Arsenal defender, part orangutan. I think he owned, correct. <laughs> oh, England's favourite tennis player, bit of a... Um, he's a lumberjack, he so likes mousse, he likes maple syrup, he's so English. Great <laughs> mistake. Yeah, very yeah. good. Oh, this is a premiership referee. Uh, his second name is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a Jesson tablet. Sure, Dirk. No, no. <laughs> He's black, a black referee. You're right, ready. Right, ready. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is the the, uh, the world's favourite fo footballer. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Uh, this is an Aussie batsman. Has the same name as the current Arsenal goalkeeper. He's not as good as you, David. Nice one, Layman. Layman, Layman and first name. Yeah, yeah. Very good indeed. This is a guy who um, recently got done for speeding. He was so upset he drove out of White Hart Lane just after being sacked. Good <laughs> And got done by um, <laughs> by the police officer. Said, "Good news, Mr. Hoddle. Three points." <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to getting indigestion and going in and asking for a packet of Durkin. <laughs> okay, you need eight to win. Is that the street eight? term for them? I think you can do it. You can do eight. Hey, you want me to do eight? Right. Come on, sir. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Give, on. Give, 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 and the time starts. Okay, now. Okay, first name is sort of sexy, second name is like a truck, third name is like mistletoe. He's a Dutch cheat. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, second name is a South African bloke. Second name, he should be in the Bee Gees. Look. No. John Paul. No. Who's the bloody Bee Gees? Bee Gees. 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 Bee Okay, this is uh, he's a runner, British runner. Second name is you haven't got one at the moment, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. All right, like Charlotte, uh, elementary. Uh, Kelly Holmes. Kelly Holmes. Kelly Holmes. Kelly Holmes. Well done. Okay, uh, this is a Formula One bloke. Uh, second name, come on, boys. This is uh, he's a rugby bloke. Uh, second name, remember the Marvel comic book Doctor? No. Not Doctor. No. <laughs> Doctor, he was always fighting the dreadful Lamu. No, uh, no doctor, not if you're not normal, you're a little bit mental. No, <laughs> well, you're not as well. No, oh, Strange. Strange. Oh. Doctor Strange. <laughs> so Phil's team have 16, but this week's winner is David's team oh, with 18. Yeah. David, Rory and Shane, Phil, Jonathan and Jonathan, my name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. The gas bill's too high and it's all grandma's fault, she'll have to go, comedy with the crouches after the news here on BBC One, and on BBC Two, why was the will of Diana, Princess of Wales, apparently altered after her death? Can't take it with you, investigates.